welcome to Inspirational Transformational TV Show. Amy Whitney here today with my very special guest, Christine Whelan. Christine has found her passion. She has received her calling and she is living it. The story that she shares with us today is so incredible. I feel like I've just seen a really great movie and I want to sit here and say, and then this happens, and then this happens, and then this happens. So I'm going to stop myself there and I'm going to say, if you have any interest in helping people, uh, in the paranormal, in ghosts, in just a really amazing almost unbelievable story, stay tuned because Christine is just going to wow you today. So without further ado, uh, welcome Christine and thank you. Christine Whelan, welcome to Inspirational Transformational TV show. Thank you thanks, so much. For, thanks for having me. Oh, you beat me to it. Good yeah. job. <laughs> you must have watched my other shows. You know I'm going to say that. <laughs> Now, Christine, let's get a feel for your story. Do you mind starting at a point when you first realized that you could sense spirits around you? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't remember not feeling them. Um, I remember being a little girl, and um, I had my own room, and as soon as it got dark out, I had to close the curtains and because I could feel something looking in. So until I was 17 years old, I always had the curtains closed at night. Um, I never felt alone. I spent a lot of time in my in my bedroom playing, and I never really felt alone. I think the strongest thing that I had as a child was when we would go for a drive. Um, I would I could tell what houses had spirits in them. I would call them special people, and uh, I could feel their their emotions because they they live through emotions. Um, I learned really quickly not to tell adults this, and as much as I felt alone. Um, I, I'm not alone when I was alone in a room because of uh, spirits. By not being believed by living adults, I felt very alone. Now you mentioned that spirits live through emotions. Mm -hmm. what, uh, can you just explain what that means to me? Um, getting a little technical, the, the, we live in the third dimension. The fourth dimension is run by emotions. So they are all about emotions. So they, um, if, if you feel a certain emotion, they will react to that emotion. So um, if you're feeling a positive emotion, all the light or the positive spirits, it'll strengthen them. If you, if you feel fear, it'll strengthen the darker ones. So they react on, on your emotions. Oh, that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. Now, but is there any one incident or location that's, that stood out for, for you with regards to sensing the spirits? Oh, I, re I remember this road that I called my favorite road. And uh, it was a road, we lived out in kind of a country area. And uh, so we had to take this road in order to get into the closest town to go shopping. So as a little girl, we, on Saturdays, we'd always take this road. And I called it my favorite road just because it was hilly and lots of trees. And, and there was this one building. It looked like a little school. It was white. And it was abandoned, and you know it wasn't well kept, and, and it was old. And um, from the moment I saw it in view, I had to stare at it. And I would again the emotion. I would pick up fear and mm. panic, and I would stare at this house or this this building until we moved away from it. I couldn't see it anymore. At first, I would you know as a little girl because I remember this going back to. As soon as I was tall enough to look out the back window, okay, that's when I, I noticed it. So I, I, you know, five or six, seven years old, um, my instant reaction would be, you know, mommy, mommy, there's some something's wrong with in that building. Of course, you know, parents focus on don't disrupt the driver. So, yes. and I would get in trouble for this. So I would stop telling adults, and I would just experience this. But twice, at least twice a week, we would pass this building, and every time for years. I would stare, I would just stare at this house. I come to find out later on what it was, but at the time I just would do this. And then um, when I was 10, we moved away. Mm -hmm. And uh, then, you know, I, I became an adult and I totally forgot about this building. Um, and then when I moved into this house, still forgot about it. It took a couple of years after I moved into this house that I realized, oh, wait a minute. The, on this road. This was the road. This was my favorite road and, and uh, this building was on this road. It took a long time to try and find out, figure out, remember where it was. And it was right next door. So what you're saying is the house we're in today that you live in mm -hmm. is right next door to the house that was really significant. That's right. 
Wow. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know it. It didn't, you know, nobody told me about it. I didn't, oh, I want to live in this house because that's where the... No, it wasn't until years after I lived in this house that I remembered that that building that I, that I had to focus on week after week was right next door. So just to clarify, so as a child you were feeling the emotion of the spirits. Did you know that's what it was and you were looking at the adults who didn't realize like they were crazy or you were mm -hmm. just picking up on it? I didn't know what it was. Okay. Well, I, I knew at some level there was something going on inside the house. I just, because there wasn't an adult clarifying it for yes. me, what, what I was experiencing, yes. and, I, and I didn't have the individual thinking enough yes. to, to make that decision on my own. And, and plus, I, I heard it enough. It's all in your head, you yes. have an overactive imagination. Yes. So eventually, I just, there was a certain amount of block, an yes. emotional block, so I really couldn't pick up properly. Amazing. And so at what age did you realize the truth of it all, that you were picking up on spirits and, and, mm -hmm. and come to own it? I really don't know. I know that I was an adult when I realized every house that I've been in has, has had at least one. Okay. Um, I remember saying to people that I feel them. I've learned that, that what that is is clairsentient. You, you pick up on emotions. Okay. So I feel them. And I used to believe that um, I would stir them up because they all had secrets. Okay. And this was all instinct. No, nothing told me this. It's yes. just it felt like they all have secrets and because I can pick up their emotions I'm a threat to them. Mm. So I stir them up. Mm. I've only had one, I've only lived in one house my whole life that I felt that there wasn't at least one in there and I didn't feel comfortable there. Oh, it felt wow. cold <gasps> and empty to me. Wow. Now let's, let's, now that we're talking about homes again, let, yeah. what was it like when you first moved into this house here? <laughs> well, um, I saw it in the paper. Um, my son and I had been driving around because um, I wanted to live in this area. Uh, like I said, I lived in, around here when I was a kid. And so we drove around and didn't see anything until I saw it in the paper um, that it was on this road. And I thought, oh, I'd love to live on this road. So I came here, and my first thought was, I, as I'm pulling in the driveway, mm, I, I need to you know, paint the house. If I get this, the first thing I'm going to do is paint the outside because it's just, it's not painted, it's not a good paint job. And then I came inside and every, every, almost every room I went into, my reaction was, ah! <laughs> it hadn't been decorated, it hadn't been changed since the 70s. Oh. And so there were big flowers on the okay. wallpaper. Yeah. So I was focused on that so much, I didn't pick up on anything. However, it did feel like home. As much as there was that wallpaper, this house looked, I, I have before and after shots, and this, this room was horrid. Um, I just felt that it was home, and um, the people who owned it, I, I, I just went on about, you know, I, I must have this home. Uh, it doesn't have city water, it doesn't have proper heating, you know, it's such an old home, it has the old ways of, of everything, mm -hmm. and um, I said, well, how, where this might be a, a um, inconvenience for some people, this is like returning home to me, because I had a house just out further out in the country that had the same kind of stuff so it just felt like home to me they said well we've got other people coming and uh, we'll call you tomorrow mm -hmm. and I, I didn't think you know I'm a single woman and this is you know a lot to take care of and they called me that night wow you've got it Beautiful. so the second time I came in same thing it was ah oh my goodness <laughs> but I didn't feel anything until the first day I moved in Okay. The first day I moved in, I was putting boxes into the room that I was going to, that was going to be my room upstairs, the master bedroom, and I turned around to walk out, and I heard as clear as anything a woman sneeze. It was so clear I expected her to turn around, and I expected as I turned around to see this woman standing there, and I, and I didn't see anybody. So I just went, oh, okay. <laughs> because of my history, it didn't phase me at all. Um, there's a woman here. And so we'll coexist, and yep. it started to feel like she lived her life vicariously through me. Okay. So it wasn't until later that we started to notice that there was more. <laughs> so do you want to tell us a little bit about like when you realized there was more? Well, um, it was about um, fall 2007 mm -hmm. that um, I started to notice, or it just started to feel like there were more, but then it didn't feel like the same. Mm -hmm each day, from day to day. You mean the energies of the spirits? Yeah, it mean, just yeah. it just felt like there was a strong um, male here. And then the next day, not, okay? okay? And then I had a dog at the time, and he would 
kind of as if there were people standing in a row. Look at one, and then his ears would go down. You know how when you talk to a dog and you go, "Oh, nice puppy," and they go, mm. yeah. and then somebody says, "Hey, how's it going?" and his ears go up. Yes. So he'd be, "Oh, oh," you know, he and, and he would look as if he was going from face to face. And I thought, "Ooh, that's more than one." Okay. Hmm. Yes. And I wonder what's going on. Never really thought anything of it. Okay, we got more here, but they seem to come and go. Yes. I never, and nobody told me that that's exactly what was going on. It just felt that way. And then the summer of 2008, a friend was here. I have a lot of friends who come here for like weekends. They come here for like retreats. Okay. And uh, I have some friends that are very connected to the house and they start to hear, they, we would hear things. We would, they would hear um, a woman's voice. We just thought it was that woman. Yes. Um, somebody walking down the hallway upstairs, a little tapping on the wall. Um, and then um, somebody heard falling down the stairs. So, um, turns out that the woman who lived here before me fell down the stairs twice. Oh my goodness. So, and she was alive when I, when I moved in here. She was in a long-term care, so it wasn't her that wow. I heard sneeze. It was somebody else. I just assumed it was her. Yeah. Um, a lot of people in the neighborhood knew her and would come to me and tell me all kinds of stories about her, and it just seemed that she was living vicariously through me. Yes. Um, she loved to bake. Right. And on Saturday nights I loved to bake and it just felt like there was somebody that was getting so much pleasure out of my baking. Nice. So um, the, an interesting one was when um, I, w I heard music, like mm -hmm. old music, and I could sense that there were two people dancing, like waltzing. Mm -hmm. And I was just about to come up with a logical explanation for this as I was taught as mm -hmm. a child. And then another person said, do you hear that? So when two people hear something, you can't. You can't yes. disqualify it. Yes. Yeah. Amazing. So in, in going back to the summer of 2008, one of my friends was staying here for the, for the weekend, and he just likes to roam around the property. I don't have to take care of him, you know. Um, and he noticed that within the lilac bushes, one of the bushes is growing twisted. Mm -hmm. And he had read somewhere that that means that there's an earth vortex, which is an, uh, a center of energy within the earth mm -hmm. and it and vortex it's spinning so the the energy is spinning like this so if there's anything that's growing on it it will grow all twisted so Amazing. you know we realized that there's a, a vortex on the property at that point so to have a vortex on your property mm -hmm. is that significant there's a lot of vortexes all over the all over the okay. earth um, but some of them are used as portals okay. between the different dimensions you know, um, because it, it is kind of like a doorway, so, yeah. Ah, okay, yeah. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> and so, when did things start to change for you? Uh, it was March 2nd, 2009. Um, I had told a couple of people about the, the activity in the house. I had told them about the vortex. And so, um, you know, when you network, you know, mm -hmm. people tell other people and then, um, you know, and next thing you know, a, a plan is, is, is um, created. Uh, a group of people who are paranormal investigators, they, they were starting a TV show. Mm -hmm. And they asked if they could come in and um, do some footage and see if they could find anything and, and put on camera for their, their, an episode for the TV show. And um, without getting into that, it just it didn't work out mm -hmm. um, after that. Um, there was, you know, too many repercussions and complications with that, so it, it just it didn't work out. However, um, I'm very fortunate that that night did happen. They came at like seven o'clock at night, and they stayed till four thirty in the morning. They were gone oh. a long time. It was a long, overwhelming night. By the time they were gone, I was in crisis, emotional crisis. I was completely overwhelmed. What I what I learned was that there is um, a vortex at the bottom of uh, underneath. The, this house, mm -hmm. um, it goes up through the stairways, so mm -hmm. it's contained, the energy is contained. When you think about that, somebody years and years ago must have known it because they specifically put the house right on top of this vortex so that they can contain the energy within the stairways. Yeah. There's one underneath the barn or the shed, they're right next to each other so it's hard to tell because okay. there's a lot of activity and um, it's just like a swirling activity in the shed, but it also feels that way in the barn. So there's one there, and then there's one right where that building was that oh. I noticed when I was five years old. Yes. Um, and then there's the set, and, and they that they make a triangle, and then there's the the strong one where the lilac bushes.